Germany, during the course of World War II, directed great amounts of effort and resources to the development of super-heavy tanks. The biggest of these to be constructed was the Maus. At 188 tons, it was the heaviest operational tank ever made by any nation. But how would it have performed on the battlefield? In the early stages of its development, the tank was called the Mammoth. The contract for the development of the Mammoth was given to Dr. Porsche in March of 1942. The specification was for a 100-ton super-heavy tank which mounted a gun of at least 128mm in size in a fully rotating turret with priority placed on achieving the heaviest possible armour and firepower. Speed was of secondary importance. It took Porsche's team four months to come up with the design for the Mammoth. In June of 1942, Porsche's design was shown to Hitler, who approved it. By January of 1943, the name had changed to the Mouse, and Hitler who kept a keen interest in the progress of the project, demanded modifications to the design. He insisted that the main armament be the 128mm PAC-44 anti-tank gun with a coaxial 75mm gun and a substantial increase in armour protection. The 128mm PAC-44 was a huge gun to put on a vehicle which meant that the turret had to be enormous in order to house it. By May of 1943, a full-sized wooden model of the mouse was ready and presented to the members of military and industrial experts who examined it along with Hitler. By now, due to all the modifications, the weight had increased to a massive 188 tonnes. In comparison, the weight of the Sherman was a mere 31 tons. Its size had expanded to dwarf the main Soviet tank, the T-34. Guderian, an expert in tank warfare, attended the presentation and was not impressed, but noted that Hitler's entourage found the mouse to be magnificent. Amazed at the sheer size and power, Hitler approved the mouse for mass production, ordering an initial series of 150 to be built by Krupp Armaments Company. Possibly due to production delays caused by bombing, Krupp, seemingly without warning, were told on the 27th of October 1943 that the production of the mouse had been cancelled. Work on the two almost completed prototype vehicles would continue as a research and development project. A month later, the first prototype mouse rolled out of the factory and was sent to Bollingen, proving ground for testing. Due to bombing by Allied aircraft, production at Krupp's plant in Essen had ground to a halt for a while. This caused an estimated two-month delay in turret production. This meant that the first prototype mouse had to be fitted with a mock-up turret of the same weight and size as the production turret. No doubt as a result of now being a low-priority project due to the full production cancellation, it took until June the following year for the second prototype to be fitted with an authentic turret for the start of trials. The main difference between the two prototypes was the engine supplied by Daimler-Benz. The DB603 aircraft petrol engine was changed to the MB517 diesel engine, which powered the Navy's torpedo boats. At the beginning of October 1944, both tanks were sent to the Army testing grounds at Kumensdorf for extensive analysis and evaluation. Although tests on the whole were successful, there had been problems. The great weight of the mouse counted against it from the beginning.
the tracks and wheels had failed and had to be replaced with stronger versions. The engine had suffered valve damage as a result of the intense stress during testing. Prototype 1 had strayed onto a soft area of the testing ground and sank to about half its height. Due to having the thickest armour ever mounted on a tank at the time, the mouse was immune to any frontal Allied anti-tank hit. The sheer size and velocity of the shell from the mouse's Pack 44 gun meant that it could penetrate the armour of any Allied tank it managed to hit. As a result of its huge size and weight, a special railroad carriage had to be constructed for the transportation of the mouse. The price paid for all this superiority was speed, size, reliability and ground pressure. It was difficult to operate the vehicle off-road and crossing rivers on anything but the strongest bridges was a nightmare. As a result, a system was developed where the mouse would ford rivers it needed to cross. It would submerge and drive across the river's bottom. The crew would receive air through a large snorkel. The solution required one mouse to supply electrical power via a cable to the other making the crossing. When travelling by road, it had a top speed of 22 km per hour. Fuel consumption was 3.5 litres per kilometre, which gave it a road travelling range of 160 kilometres. By this stage of the war, with critical fuel shortages, such excesses were hard for Germany to justify. Its enormous size made it an easy target to hit, while difficult to conceal. Being so ponderous meant that in a fast-moving battle it would quickly be left behind, which was the fate of the two at Kuhnensdorf. Both were blown up to prevent their capture by the Soviets in April of 1945. Using parts from the two wreckage, the Soviets managed to construct an operational mouse, which was sent with other captured advanced tanks to Kubinka testing grounds near Moscow for evaluation. The Soviets found the mouse to have no practical military use and placed it in a museum where it can still be seen to this day. Incredibly, an even bigger tank weighing a thousand tons was designed, making use of spare battleship turrets, which was given the name of Rate Land Cruiser but this insanity was stopped before it got anywhere near production. Had the mouse made it onto the battlefield in the numbers that Germany had hoped, there is little doubt that it would have disappointed its backers. Subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you don't miss the next video.